Uh, hi everyone. So actually, sorry. Set up here. So uh, so far, we've talked about uh, continuum linear elasticity theory, isotropic uh, linear elasticity theory, anisotropic linear elastic. Uh, linear elastic <laughs> theory. We've talked about viscoelastic materials now. We know how to do more circle. We know how to uh, rotate our uh, stress state. We know how to work with uh, thin wall pressure vessels. We've all been working, um, all the work we've done so far, again, going back to kind of the very first part of this lecture is looking at our stress strain curve. We've only been dealing with this first of the three regimes. So we've only been dealing with elastic. Now we're finally going to get into, and again, we got into the elastic regime first because there's all these equations that we could work with and predict stress and strain. But now we're getting into kind of our plastic regime. So just a kind of a reminder, plastic is permanent deformation. It's when your materials are permanently deformed, so they will not pop back like in your elastic regime. There are de uh, defects present even in the elastic regime, but again, uh, atomistically, the plastic regime is when you start to kind of initiate and uh, again, move those defects. So you initiate dif uh, dislocation or defect motion, um, and it is going to change. Uh, there are ways to essentially change when that occurs in terms of stress. So you could either uh, basically perform a processing step in your material to increase your yield stress or decrease your yield stress. That will also affect essentially the uh, ductility of your material as well. So we're gonna get to that in a bit, but uh, again, as engineers, we wanna kind of figure out, you know, yielding or permanently deforming a material uh, can be catastrophic for your application. So we need to figure out whether or when yielding will occur for a simple, uh, or for you know any given kind of loading state. So for any stress tensor that we see, we wanna be able to predict, okay, will our material yield or will our material not yield? Um, and it's not as simple because again, usually, I mean, that's, it's really straightforward if you are just doing a uniaxial tensile test, because I know I can look up for my material, what is the yield stress? If this stress here, this, you know, my coordinate system is 2, 1. If sigma 2, 2 is greater than sigma y, then I know, okay, that material is going to yield. But what happens when I have kind of this complex stress state? How do we know when the material is going to yield and when it, uh, when it won't? Well, that is going to be the uh, focus of the topic today. And luckily, we have several yield criteria that we've kind of developed over the years uh, that will kind of describe that phenomenon for us. Uh, and those being... Uh, the ranking, Tresca, and von Mises yield criteria. So these criteria have evolved over the years, and unfortunately, uh, kind of the way that they evolve is people use a certain set of criteria, and then uh, it fails dramatically. Uh, and then they have to kind of, you know, there's a catastrophic failure, and then they have to kind of rethink uh, essentially their yield criteria and figure out, okay, why did this, you know, why did the material fail before this criterion was, uh, was reached? Uh, and then we kind of figure out, okay, you know, uh, we uh, redefine and we create yield criteria that are uh, more appropriate for our given loading state. So let's start with ranking first, uh, one of the more simple ones. So ranking criterion is the maximum normal stress criterion. Um, a material is going to fail whether uh, when the material uh, or yield when the maximum principal stress, so sigma 1. So sigma 1, if you only see one notation here, that is going to kind of typically define, uh, is the notation we've worked with previously your maximum principal normal stress. So the ranking criterion says, if our sigma one, our maximum normal uh, principal stress state, again, we, sigma one, sigma two, and sigma three, it's when you have uh, basically a more circle like this. So like we kind of saw previously, so sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, once you have the three circles and here, and we're kind of laying again on that principal normal stress state. So if sigma one is greater than or equal to the yield stress of that material, it will yield. So that is when your material is gonna yield, when sigma one is greater than or equal to the yield stress. So this uh, ranking criteria, excuse me, I'm gonna have to stop for just a second. So this ranking criteria works really, really well for kind of materials that fail or yield uh, when you're under kind of uh, normal stresses. So this is good for kind of ceramic materials. So it actually describes those. So ceramics, excuse me, let me undo that. So this criteria works well for ceramics. 
and other materials that are going to yield or kind of fail when there's maximum uh, normal stresses uh, in tension or compression. Um, however, uh, it doesn't always work. And specifically, it fails or doesn't work well when you have materials that uh, basically yield when they're undergoing shear. And this is true a lot for, uh, so it doesn't kind of take into account anything about shear. So this, uh, this is particularly problematic because we've talked about previously that a lot of metals will typically yield when you have maximum uh, shear stresses. So whenever you're, under, whenever you're in a loading state that maximizes shear, so that would be this, this state and this Mohr circle, metals will typically yield when you have maximum shear stresses. So this is not going to be a good criteria to use if you have, again, a material that yields uh, when they're under kind of maximum shear. So the way, uh, you know, the criteria that kind of takes this into account is the Tresca criteria. So we'll go on this on the next page. So the Tresca criteria is also, so while the ranking was the maximum shear stress uh, criterion, the Tresca criteria is the maximum, or excuse me, the ranking uh, criteria is the maximum normal stress criterion. The Tresca criterion is the maximum shear stress criterion. So it will fail when your sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is greater than uh, your yield stress. So it's also kind of, uh, it's typically kind of, uh, you know, uh, you can kind of see, and we just drew it on this the next page. We know that I hit my maximum shear when sigma 1 minus sigma 3 is equal to, or is divided by 2. This is my tau max. So, the Tresca criterion says that when sigma 1 minus sigma 3 uh, is greater than or equal to uh, sigma y, then that material is going to yield. So, that is just that, uh, that value right there. So, again, if this, if, if this criteria is met, that material is going to yield. So, the ranking material works well for ceramics. The Tresca criteria works well for materials that yield uh, undergoing shear stress, for example, metals. But again, this criteria was uh, was extremely poor uh, in the 1913s. Uh, in 1913, for subs, um, the Tresca criteria was uh, did not predict when those uh, subs would yield, and this was extremely problematic. So you had subs basically failing uh, and yielding before this criteria predicted it. Um, so. Again, just like just like uh, Tresca replaced, you know, uh, the ranking criteria for different materials for subs and thin-walled pressure vessels or other kind of, you know, um, other materials. It was found that the von Mises criterion uh, was kind of a more accurate predictor of when a material yields. So, the von Mises criterion is also called the maximum shear deformation energy criterion. Um, so, this is much more complicated <laughs> mathematically. So. You can uh, basically define this sigma effective, uh, and it's defined here. So again, if you just have any general uh, stress tensor, so one, two, three, sigma two one, sigma two two, sigma two three, and sigma three one, sigma three two. Uh, sorry about that. I want to keep consistent, so I'm going to erase because we know better that the this tensor is symmetric. So sigma two one ah I did it again excuse me so sigma one two sigma two two and sigma two three and now sigma one three sigma two three and sigma two three so I could plug in all these values for any given uh, stress tensor or if you haven't already written in terms of the principal stress state this is a little bit nicer mathematically. So if this whole value here is greater than or equal to the yield stress, that material will yield. Uh, and so again, it's a much better predictor, again, for certain materials. So we could actually take a look uh, right here. These are the different yield criterion uh, kind of shown graphically, where you have, again, this kind of principal load stress here, here. So this is our uh, ranking, ranking criterion right here. This is our uh, von Mises. And this is our, uh, I should have changed colors, but that curve is our, um, oh, excuse me, uh, 
let me erase here. So this is our ranking. This is our Tresca. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna erase everything and I'm gonna rewrite it in terms of the colors. So this is von Mises. Mises. I'm gonna switch to green here. This is gonna be my Tresca. And my blue is gonna be my ranking. So if my stress falls within this kind of yield loci, it will not yield. So if I'm inside my kind of uh, cylinder here, or my kind of oval, or my elliptical, it will not yield. Once I get beyond, it will yield. So you can kind of see where uh, the, the yield criteria can either be an overestimate or an underestimate, depending, again, on your kind of application. But when you're in the yield loci, you will not... Uh, uh, you are not going to yield in your material. Uh, when you're outside, that material will yield. So you can kind of see that the von Mises criterion actually predicts, you know, that the material will actually survive a little bit uh, further uh, until you kind of get beyond, you know, for these kind of compression there. So there's certain regions where here, this could be an overestimate or an underestimate. It might kind of say, oh, the material will survive when actually, oh no, the material might, you know, depending on which yield criterion you're looking at, you can kind of see why it could be a poor predictor for certain stress states. Um, so under high compression uh, or pure compression or pure tension here, uh, it's not going to kind of, uh, you see the kind of the difference in the yield loci. So that's basically your kind of three criterion. So again, if you're asked for, you know, uh, now that you know how to calculate your principal stress rates from Mohr circle, it's fairly straightforward to kind of see if your material will yield or uh, survive uh, from these different values. Uh, so yeah, that is essentially uh, that is essentially your different yield criteria. So next time we're going to get into kind of a really fun topic, which is your yielding mechanisms um, and how do we strengthen the material and what is what are the consequences of essentially increasing your yield strength. So unfortunately, you can't increase your yield strength infinitely. You have to pay a price, and you pay a price in terms of ductility. So we'll get into that next time. Uh, so uh, please. Any other questions, uh, you can definitely get started quite a bit on the problem set now. And yeah, that's it. Have a great day. Thanks. Bye.